There is an object in my house that no one touches. It's this encanted charmed knife. My kids, my wife, even my parents know better not to touch it. Because this knife belongs to me and it has a story behind it, which I'm about to share with you. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Konstantin and welcome to Letters to King. We're living in today's Russia explained by the insider you can trust. If you are a returning viewer, then thank you so much. You are awesome and you rock. About 10 years ago, in 2010, I spent a considerable time in Fergana. It's a city in the east of Uzbekistan, the biggest city of Fergana Valley. Why did I move to Uzbekistan in the first place? Well, it's fairly simple. I was trying to make $1 million living and working there. I made an entire video on the topic. The link is right here. Check it out. It's pretty interesting. There you can also find out the answer, whether I made the million bucks or I didn't. Fergana is a city of approximately 350,000 people and it's a very sleeping community. Its main business is agriculture. There are numerous fields around the city and the entire valley is surrounded by humongous mountains as high as 6,000 meters or 18, 20,000 feet. An incredibly scenic and beautiful place. Lots of water running down from the mountains, an incredibly rich soil, nice people. But there's one problem. There's nothing to do in Fergana for fun. So I basically worked there six days a week from morning till night. And Sundays, every seventh day, I had for myself. And not much to do. So I would start my day off going to a local bazaar, which was kind of an interesting and vibrant place where local villagers would gather and they used to call it to-do bazaar. They would bring whatever they grew or whatever they made and they were trying to sell it. In the back of the bazaar, I stumbled upon a knife stand. Nothing fancy, you know, just a little mobile stand made out of poor materials. But, oh boy, the knives that were on the stand, they were out of this world. Incredibly beautiful, unbelievable, incredible knives. So I went to see the knives on the stand and kind of stood there right in front of the knives, admiring them. Made a small talk to the seller and he told me his story. The guy who was selling the knives also was forging, making them. He was a very skilled craftsman living up high in a mountainous village where there was no electricity, no running water, nothing. He has been forging knives all his life and he was the craftsman in the fourth generation. His father, his grandfather, great-grandfather, they all were forging knives. In return, I told the guy my story, how I came to Fergana to open an office and, you know, create jobs for locals and sell services in Russia, all over Russia, from Fergana. And he was pretty amazed. I don't think he got the concept, but the scale of, you know, what we were doing in Fergana really shocked him. The guy decided to give me a present. It's this knife. Only in return, he asked me to give him a smallest coin, like an Uzbeki penny, because there's a tradition that if you get a knife as a present in Uzbekistan and don't give anything back to the giver, then in the future, the giver of the present of the knife will become your sworn enemy. But if you give something in return, like the smallest coin, then you will remain friends forever. That's what the legend says. I gave the guy a penny and he took it. He told me something I cannot forget up to this day. He said, literally, I'm taking this coin from you, but also I'm taking a little piece of your heart because every time you're going to touch this knife, 
you're going to think of Fergana, of this beautiful sunny day, of this beautiful land, of its people, of me giving you this knife. So with the coin, I'm taking a little piece of your heart. And that's a fair exchange. And you know what? The guy was 100% right. Every time I take out this knife, I think of him, I think of that bazaar on Sundays, I think of Fergana, and I think of that marvelous land. So he reached his goal. This is not a simple knife though. Check this out. And I'm gonna take another knife to show you. You see, this is the trademark. And it's unique, it belongs to the craftsman who forged this knife. It's his print. In Fergana Valley and probably in Tashkent, perhaps even in all Uzbekistan, anyone looking at his trademark, he will understand who the forger of this knife is. Then there is an absolutely wonderful handle. It's made out of a bone of some kind of a large animal. Very, very comfortable and it looks absolutely amazing. Check this out. It's absolutely beautiful. But this knife's biggest secret is its artwork right here. This is a charm. The knife maker told me that these symbols are not just artwork, they are charms. They stand for fire, water, air and earth. And also he was telling me it's for good luck and to protect from bad spirits and things like that. At, honestly, at this point, I don't really remember the whole story, but I know that this is magical charm. This knife also comes with a knife case that's also absolutely beautiful and a piece of art. It's made out of very thick paper and it has engravements, leather straps. Oh, it's beautiful, check it out. This is how it works. There you go. I only use this knife when I barbecue something outside. I cut meat and vegetables with it, and that's it. I sharpen it myself with a sharpening stone, and no one else knows better not to touch it. It's one of those things that is very dear to me. And now you know the story behind this knife. If you found this video interesting, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any further updates including more of my personal stories, just like this one about the enchanted, enchanted knife, charmed knife. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.